Hello everyone, this is Maria with I Know I Can Television and today we have a special guest. We have Miss Colleen Schmidt from Molina Healthcare. Hi. How are you today? I'm wonderful, Maria. How are you? I am wonderful as well, thank you. Thank you for being on I Know I Can Television. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, definitely. You know, we, we heard a lot about Molina from uh, Dr. Ibrahim, mm -hmm. um, so we are just thrilled that you guys are here now in New York State. Well, we're happy so, to be here. Absolutely wonderful. So tell us a little bit about Molina Healthcare. Sure. So Molina um, Healthcare of New York is a health plan, so we mm -hmm. deal with insurance for the lower income population. And although Molina is new to New York, mm -hmm. um, our company here is not new. So right. Molina just purchased the organization back in uh, last year and yeah. the end of last year. So we have our the same population, right around under 40,000 members. Okay. Um, so you know it's been a, a wonderful opportunity so far. Melina is part of a large organization, mm -hmm. so if, if I can, I'd love to tell you the story about yes, Melina. Yes, I would love to hear the story. So Melina started with one person, and it was Dr. Melina who founded the organization, and this was back in 1980, and he was emergency room physician, and during his time there, he found that people were coming to the emergency room for just primary care, for just basic health needs, and we know Unfortunately, that happens today a lot of yes, times. It does. Um, mm -hmm. And so Dr. Molina felt that he was really frustrated with that mm -hmm. and opened up two clinics in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And for those two clinics, he ended up um, spreading from there right. to a health plan. Wow. And so today I'm very proud to be part of an organization that has 4.7 million members. Wow, that's um, awesome. And yes. only in government programs, so that's only in Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, we are in 12 states, so New York is, is one of them, and we're happy to bring that philosophy um, throughout the organization here today. We've got about 22,000 employees. Wow, that's um, wonderful. So here locally, we have about 125 individuals. Okay. Since yes. Molina purchased us, um, we are you know, approximately added about 25 new people. So very wow, good news. so you're growing quickly. We are. Good, we are. good. Yeah. So people can continue to look at the Molina website to make sure that there's that there's job opportunities to make sure that they... You know, Maria, I think that our mission is, is to deal with the underserved and the vulnerable population. Right. And we need good people to deal with that mission. Exactly. So exactly. we're always looking for people that um, care about working with this population. Mm -hmm. We're looking for healthcare professionals, for people that deal with quality specialists as well. Right. So, um, you know, love to love to talk to people about that. Opportunity. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Any growth in New York State is always, you know, a plus. So yes. That's wonderful. Yes, especially so, here in Upstate. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, because we live here. Yes. <laughs> and right. many other reasons. But yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so tell us uh, a little bit about the mission of Molina. So the mission is is to uh, deal with the underserved. Mm -hmm. So we are a health insurance, and we for people that are based on their income. Mm -hmm. So the products that we have today are our Medicaid. So if you qualify for Medicaid, you can have a choice of picking Molina on the oh. health exchange. Um, if you have a child that is under 19, sometimes mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a copay there, right. and, and you may not qualify, but your child does. So okay. we offer those services. Mm -hmm. We have something called the Heart Product, which is Health and Recovery Plan. So those are to help members with mental health conditions. Oh, so those are three that we have today. Um, what we're adding is the Essential Plan. So that is um, new to us for next year. And right. that will cover people that maybe are um, working part-time mm -hmm. or that they're working seasonal right. and don't qualify for Medicaid or kind of bounce back and forth. And um, we see that you know that'll be a product that our members have really been asking for. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've heard a lot about the Essential Plan. Yes. So I'm sure a lot of people will be that excited That will be great. We that. are really excited. And we'll be opening it in our same footprint, which is Onondaga County here in Syracuse is where we have most of the population. Mm -hmm. We also have Cortland County, mm -hmm. Tompkins, and Child Health Plus in Oswego. Oh, perfect, perfect. So those are all the counties that people can apply for Molina they can. if they want to. They can, absolutely. <laughs> so what are your plans for, for the next following year? Do you, does Molina have any plans besides what you're already doing? We do. We have some exciting plans to share, <laughs> Maria. I'm happy to tell you that. Yes, um, yes. 
So one of the challenges that certainly I am, um, everyone understands this in healthcare, mm -hmm. and our, our patients suffer from that as well, is access to quality care yes. and access to primary care. Yes. Um, we know that our emergency rooms are filled with people just needing care and finding a place to go. Yes, so one of the wonderful things that I like about Molina is that we do have a direct care delivery system. So okay. in five of our states, we offer um, actually a clinic, mm -hmm. and we have doctors and nurses that are associated with that. And we will be opening a clinic here in Syracuse. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, and that will be approximately, we don't have the exact date because it mm -hmm. you know, takes some planning and yes, operations of with it. <laughs> um, but it will be in the inner city, and we'll be able to uh, offer uh, you know, approximately 25,000 patients wow. and hopefully more. We'll have primary care, pediatrics, and behavioral health. Um, and one of the things that I know that is a barrier that we talk about with mm -hmm. our members and our providers is transportation. Right. So Molina is going to be offering, uh, it will be a Molina bus and it will oh, be in the neighborhood. Nice. So nice. it will stop a bunch of times into the clinic. <laughs> That's um, great. But also, you know, looking at some area community centers perhaps mm -hmm. too. So we haven't worked out the detail, right. but we know that that will really help us improve the quality of care for our members. Right. Um, in, you know, in Molina clinics have daycare, so for oh, those wow. Moms and dads that, you know, mm -hmm. often as a mother myself, it can be challenging to find a babysitter if you're oh, sick yes. yourself. So bring the family in, right. not for the whole day, right, but, right. you know, we do want... <laughs> for the doctor visit. For the doctor visit. <laughs> um, but we hope that will help, you know, improve having physicals and yes. getting people in for the immunization. So, and plus they're they're beautiful and I'm excited to, to wow. see that. Well, hopefully you'll invite us again so we yes, can talk yes. about that detail. We will love to be there for your grand opening so that way we yes. can show everybody you know the the new office space and hopefully right. be able to meet some of the staff so that way everybody can feel comfortable when you come in you already know yeah. half the staff when you're there so yeah um so that would be wonderful good um so tell us a little bit um about your personal experience in regards to melina what do you love about working sure. for melina well, I'm a nurse myself, right. and um, I am, I've been a, a local Syracusan for a lot of my years, and so I am excited that this is a, a marriage with Melina. Right. Melina does, one of the things that I love about Melina is that it, we're part of the family. So yes. not only as a patient or as a member, as a staff, you really feel that commitment. Right. I love working with this population. Mm -hmm. I love being able to help the community that we have today. Right. And I wanted to share with you, if I can, a story that sort of is near to my heart. Yes, um, definitely. So we have wonderful case managers and social workers that take care of our population today. Right. There's a particular gentleman that speaks to how challenging our healthcare system is today. Right. So this per person was um, in, in and out of the emergency room. Mm -hmm. He had diabetes, and one of our case managers tried to get a hold of him and tried to reach out with him. Mm -hmm. Found out that he was discharged from the hospital, being in the emergency room, but he had no home to go to. Right. So his home was his truck, no. um, which didn't work. Right, right. And the case manager actually met him at his truck, uh -huh. was able to find his home, a home through subsidized housing. Oh, um, wonderful. And was able to, the reason he was going to the emergency room is because he didn't have a refrigerator. Oh. So he has a refrigerator now. He's not going to the emergency room. Wow. He's actually been to a physical and his diabetes is under control. So wow. that's just one person. But I think it speaks to the complexity that we have right. and, um, and how wonderful our staff is to go to that extra exactly. mile. That is. That's definitely an extra mile, especially mm -hmm. because, you know, we know the winters here are pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, so for a person to be in their truck in the middle right. of a winter storm, you know, 20 degrees, I mean, yeah. if you really break it down to the things that the um, member probably was going through, mm -hmm. you know, that was probably a, a phone call of hope that yes. he finally was able to, to have. And Maria, there's more out there. Exactly. So we're here to help. And we know that it's how the healthcare system is confusing, right, and, and we can right. certainly help. Exactly, exactly. You got wonderful staff, so. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the benefits of working at Molina Healthcare for sure. those who do want to come aboard? So we have um, very competitive benefits, excellent insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. We have 401k that you don't have to wait for, so you get that the next month that you're on. Mm -hmm. um, we're a publicly traded company, so in that, um, the nice part is that you get stock options. That's right, that's right. And at a discounted rate <laughs> right. um, to be part of our family. So when everyone comes in, you're joining the family. It's not for everyone, right. but I think if you want to work with the underserved mm -hmm. and the vulnerable populations, it can be a wonderful marriage, and we're always looking. Exactly, exactly, and that's always wonderful. 
um, not many companies do give that stock option, um, no. and it's a way for the the, com the community and people who want to be involved with mm -hmm. Molina to be able to know that there is other options, you know, to grow, not just you get a job and, and that's it. You have a job and now you also have another chance to grow right. financially. You're married into our stock. family forever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so they want everyone to grow, you know, yes. so that always makes a big difference. Um, and that's wonderful. And it's, Maria, as we go, mm -hmm. we're going to add those resources too. Exactly. So although we're part of a national company, we're really here locally. So right. we do a lot of the functions here. We do anticipate we're going to grow. So, exactly. you know, I think adding to our family is going to be really important. Well, that's wonderful. And I know that you guys are out in the community. Mm -hmm. um, many events that are coming up, um, a lot of things that are um, going to be having the Molina logo. We're going to be everywhere. So it's yes, be it's exciting. Very <laughs> so, exciting. Um, we appreciate you coming on I Know I Can Television. Is there okay. anything else you would like to tell the community? I want you to know that we're here. We know healthcare is complicated, and we're here to, to really answer those questions for you. And if you knew all of the great family that we have in Molina, you'd want to be part of ours. So that's, that's what we ask. Well, perfect. Thank you so much. That was we wonderful. appreciate your time. Thank you. And again, thank you all for coming on to I Know I Can Television, and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, what your medical specialty is. So, uh, a little bit about myself. Well, I'm new to uh, New York. Uh, I came to New York uh, uh, in last November. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I came was to take over the job of Chief Medical Officer of uh, Molina of New York. Mm -hmm. So, uh, initially I did my training in internal medicine, which is the training for uh, uh, sick adults or ill adults mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Then I practiced for about 20 years in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Oh. And from uh, Detroit, uh, I m did move both my clinical practice as well as uh, my practice uh, for uh, my managed care, which is working with the insurance companies mm -hmm. to Ohio. I was in Akron, Ohio for about five years. And then I was looking for a job that would uh, satisfy me both clinically as well as, you know, would work with uh, the populations that I care most about. And uh, uh, there was an opportunity in Molina, so I decided to come to the fair state of New York. <laughs> I'd heard so much about the weather. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you like the cold? Uh, yes, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, right? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Um, so, welcome to New York State, um, where it's going to be nice and cold, but hopefully everybody here will warm you up with all the love and support, right? It, it, uh, you know, the outpouring of uh, caring and welcome from the community has mm -hmm. been really outstanding. Good, good. Well, that is great to know. So, I understand that your um, Molina's care management model is pretty unique. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on that? So when you when you look at insurance companies, you know whether it's Molina or somebody else, mm -hmm. every insurance company tries to do uh, what is right by our members, right. uh, which are our uh, patients. Uh, we call members, uh, right. but at the same time, you know they certain insurance companies have a slight distinction from others in the sense that they do things a little better. Right. So Molina was started not as an insurance company, but mm -hmm. Molina was started by a doctor taking care of indigent patients, so people who couldn't afford health care, mm -hmm. and they tried to help those people uh, by offering care in an environment so that they could actually come in, get their care, uh, and so that is what started the Molina's vision. Right. And when that vision uh, started to prosper, the state of California asked them to help them with their uh, Medicaid population. Mm -hmm. And that's how the Molina uh, was grow. But we do a lot of things. We do case management, which is taking care of patients who have chronic illnesses like diabetes. So, you know, my mom uh, used to have diabetes and uh, she had a stroke and, uh, you know, when I was in my previous health plans, we had case management programs that actually helped her uh, with that, uh, helped her keep the appointments, reminded her of uh, the things that she needed to do. Mm -hmm. She loved to eat sweets and she was a diabetic, so she had sugar diabetes, but you know, so the nurse would call. So we do the same kind of thing. We help with asthma. 
we help with uh, people who have heart failure. Uh, we help uh, uh, our nurses go with patients to the doctor's appointment. Uh, so we do a lot of different things. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm proud to say that uh, we are known in the industry for our quality and for the fact that uh, we take care of our patients and our members to the end degree. Wow. Well, that's wonderful. So I hear you also do reminder calls for appointments and everything. Yes, we do. Uh, so we, we, we try to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, so first of all, mm -hmm. uh, all ill patients do ultimately get care. You know, their clinics, their urgent cares, their emergency rooms, their hospitals. Right. But what Melina also prides itself in is keeping patients healthy. That's right. That's so right. we, we uh, emphasize on preventive care. So what does that mean? That mm -hmm. means getting your mammograms, getting your cervical cancer screenings, right. getting your children their uh, immunizations for diabetics, getting your uh, A1Cs checked. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these services are paid for by Molina. Right. So these are free for you. That's and right. why wouldn't you want to take advantage of them? Complete. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's wonderful. And the Molina way is definitely great, and I'm happy that they are now in New York State. Um, uh, we are happy here. too. Yes, yes, definitely. So um, outside of the standard health benefits that govern the program um, offered through the health insurers like yourself, uh, does Molina offer its members any added benefits? Yeah, uh, so one of the kind of uh, distinct uh, qualities of uh, Molina is that, remember I said that uh, Molina was started by a physician, Dr. C. David Molina, mm -hmm. and he was an emergency room physician. So it, despite the fact that Molina is known as the insurance arm, we also have a physician arm. We have a Molina Medical Group, which is in five states, and I'm happy to say mm -hmm. that in Syracuse in the fall of uh, this year, uh, God willing, we will have a clinic where uh, we'll have primary care so you can go and see your family practitioner, your pediatrician. Hopefully we will even have dental services and care for uh, behavioral health, which is care for people who have depression or uh, who might need help just adapting to life. Uh, who have, uh, you know, we all have tensions. Uh, we all have difficulties. Everybody has a cross to bear. That's so, right. you know, right. uh, not everybody knows that we could all use some help exactly. in taking care of a problem. So we, 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 we should be able to utilize those services, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having the clinic. Yes, yes, that's very neat. Um, what is one of the way, best ways that we can take care of ourselves? Okay, so if you're lucky enough, to have insurance, and by the way, I think you should go out and uh, look at all the options, and I hope you pick Molina, but in any case, <laughs> if, you, you, if you can afford insurance, why not utilize it, mm -hmm. okay? It's out there. It's giving you services, and in most insurances within the Medicaid population, don't have a copay. They, you don't have to pay anything. You can get preventive care. You can uh, make sure you get your appointments for your immunizations, your mammograms, your pap smears, your well child exams, which are very, very important. What yes. the 15? Yearly. Yearly. Yes. Okay. And uh, Maria should know. She works That's in the right. quality That's department. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you get your uh, ad uh, well adult visits. Yes. So, you know, as we age, our needs are different. So mm -hmm. when I was 25, I thought I could do everything in the world. <laughs> yes. Now that I'm in my 50s, uh, I asked my son to do most of the things that I used to do. So it, it's our body ages and our body requirements are different. So, you know, uh, if you want to start an exercise program, it would be a great idea to go and visit your physician to make sure you're healthy to do That's an right. exercise program. Exactly. And that's great because that was my next question. You know, for those who do not visit the providers frequently or don't have a provider, you know, what are some of the things that... So, I would again them? repeat, if you're lucky enough to mm -hmm. have insurance, <laughs> please utilize it. I don't care whose insurance it is, 
Okay, so long as it's your own. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, whether you use Molina's insurance or use somebody else's insurance, the insurance companies these mm -hmm. days offer so many added on benefits, which is beneficial for your health. Because remember, you're not just living for yourself, you're living for your children, you're living for your spouses, mm -hmm. you're living for your parents, you know. Right. Uh, we need to make sure that we need to take care of everybody and we need to first start with ourselves. So, you know, right. get into. Yeah, get yourself checked out if there are any gaps in your care. So if you mm -hmm. needed to uh, have your shots done, get the shots done. That's right. uh, if you're going to travel, so if Maria is going to Puerto Rico and she needs to t get a traveling shot done, <laughs> she should go ahead and get, talk to her uh, provider right. yeah, to see yes. if there's something that uh, she needs to do to prevent that uh, uh, disease from occurring. Exactly. So it, it's exactly. it's kind of those things that you you can do, and you know you can talk to them about an exercise program. You mm -hmm. can talk about what healthy eating is, exactly. what a healthy lifestyle is, what, all those kinds of things. And right. you know, it, a doctor these days has so much information available mm -hmm. that they can give to you. Yeah, I know it's available on the internet, but remember. Mm -hmm. Internet is not always fact. Yes, exactly. Okay, so so you should use that uh, carefully and always check with your physician. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna shift to Spanish for a minute. Perfect. Um, so Molina eh, es una compañía que comenzó en California. Mm -hmm. El doctor C. David Molina eh, era un eh, doctor en las salas de emergencia mm -hmm. eh, allá en, 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 el, en, el, en la costa este, donde eh, él descubre, él, trabajando en, en su turno, él descubre que la, muchas de las personas que él está atendiendo mm -hmm. no vienen a la clínica de emergencia sí. por mm -hmm. emergencia médica. Sí. Quiere decir que él, Entonces se dan cuenta que es que estas personas están en programas de Medicare y Medicaid, uh -huh. que son los programas pues que asiste el gobierno. Sí. Hay muchos doctores que no en aquel momento que no querían tomar eh, responsabilidad de esos programas. Uh -huh. Entonces pues él se da a la tarea a abrir una una primera clínica en Wilmington, uh -huh. California, eh, cual fue pues Eh, muy exitosa sí. y de ahí empezaron a abrir otras clínicas en, la, en áreas distintas áreas de California a expandir y expandir en los recursos oh. eh, entonces eh, 34, 37 años más tarde que sí. donde estamos ahora, eh, Molina se ha convertido en un, en un producto nacional, sí. eh, está invertido en 12 estados, uh -huh. incluyendo eh, Puerto Rico. Sí, sí, Puerto Rico. Ah, sí, mi mito. <risa> so, I didn't say in English, so Molina is in 12 states and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico as wow. well, offering the same services. Uh, that uh, it's starting to serve. Well, uh, perfect, perfect. In New York State. That's aw that's a great story about yes, Molina. Yes, so it is. that's awesome. So, what exactly is your role at Molina, and what does uh, the community engagement team do so as a health plan? We have a community relations department uh, for the purposes of engaging the community uh, with. Molina. Uh -huh. uh, our department, uh, primarily the, the, the main objective mm -hmm. is to open doors and build bridges from Molina to the community. How do we do that? Right. So we engage with our partners, uh, community-based organizations, mm -hmm. uh, programs serving the community uh, through, it could be government programs, it could be people with a uh, grassroots initiatives right we we look for it all okay we good. look for it all because we we want to make sure that we are addressing and then we're bringing resources mm -hmm. uh, to people in our community uh, not only for their medical reasons mm -hmm. but we want to support their projects right we want to support their projects because we we believe that is a wonderful way mm -hmm. to be able to be able to integrate gotcha. in the community oh well, wonderful wonderful Entonces eh, Molina se integra, el, el trabajo que yo estoy haciendo con Molina en este uh -huh. momento es desarrollando el departamento de relaciones comunitarias, uh -huh. eh, en este departamento pues es donde hacemos el alcance a la comunidad uh -huh. para nosotros poder eh, allegarnos eh, de una manera eh, amistosa, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Eh, y apoyando sus proyectos, sus iniciativas, estamos creando puentes y abriendo puertas 
con la, los, los centros comunitarios uh -huh. que hay a través de toda la ciudad, eh, con las iglesias, eh, las comunidades de fe, muy importante sí, sí, claro. para nosotros. Eh, 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 también tenemos eh, a través del distrito escolar de Syracuse. Mm, qué bueno. So, we're also working with the faith communities uh -huh. uh, across the city and with the Syracuse City School District. Perfect. Eh, trying to serve and bring um, just cool things to, to that's right yeah. that's right <laughs> and we see some cool things today so we're gonna yes. make sure that everybody that's watching so can see today, it it's a great example right uh, right we were outreached by one of the churches in in our community okay and uh, we have two new aerospatial engineers in town oh nice uh, which are hispanic Ooh. Uh, and, <laughs> right? and so with their help we have brought uh, a stem program to the children here today oh wonderful which are children that all of them uh, are from the Syracuse city school district right and the charter south southwest uh, charter oh very nice very mm -hmm. nice and so it's a, it's a wonderful program mm -hmm. uh, it looks fun they, they're <laughs> very committed at this point they're starting to fly their their uh, yeah yeah their mini rockets that's right that's that's they've right. been building all afternoon yeah so now's the fun part right exactly exactly <laughs> so this is the kind of event this is the kind of uh, integration right we like uh, we want to be able to have with our community perfect perfect well that's yeah. wonderful um, so if Molina is a health insurance company um, why is there such an emphasis in regards to doing extra things in the community instead of just being a health insurance company so Molina Molina eh, have a eh, core values through which we want to integrate and serve mm -hmm. a further, further serve the community, right. which are homelessness, uh, literacy, right. healthy living, mm -hmm. uh, of course, healthy practices. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and through, through these core values, uh, we, we try to find commonalities with mm -hmm. these community programs and initiatives that um, we want to support. Right, right, exactly, perfect. Um, so that's awesome. I mean, that's great to know. You don't see too many insurance companies doing that these days. Um, so that's great. So since Molina is so focused on the community, um, can you just share with us a few examples of the type of programs that you're planning on hosting this year? So sure. Uh, right now we're working to with different agencies. Uh, we're working to bring some prenatal um, uh, workshops mm -hmm. uh, to create awareness in our community to our new moms oh, or moms okay. to be they don't need to be new right 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 <laughs> uh, of the importance of the prenatal care right and uh, so we're bringing these uh, workshops and awareness sessions mm -hmm. uh, through the community-based organizations very nice and after they go through their learning experience then we host a community baby shower wow and then we bring to them um, the things that that they may need for when their baby are babies are born yes yes uh, and sometimes it's hard to get right right uh, so we want to be able to support that exactly so that's an example of something mm -hmm. we, we're trying to to bring to the community we're also working through the the faith community mm -hmm. uh, the hispanic faith community in specific we're working on a literacy program okay as you know literacy is one of those core values through which molina right uh, it works and i'll tell you a little story about that that. Okay. Dr. C. David C. C. David Molina, uh -huh. eh, when he was young, eh, he was a second grade teacher. Oh, okay. And while he was uh, teaching, mm -hmm. uh, that's what he, how he supported his, his medical oh, eh, okay. studies. Very nice. Uh, and so he, that's why Molina is so invested mm -hmm. in, in making sure that literacy is at, is at the forefront wow. in our community. And that's wonderful. Good yes. to know because yes. um, it is important, very important. So, mm -hmm. vamos a traducir un poquito de esto. Okay, está bueno. Eh, so, entonces Molina eh, se integra con la comunidad de muchísimas maneras. Mm -hmm. eh, nosotros nos allegamos, eh, Molina tiene ciertos valores básicos que son que son lo que mueve verdad sí. nuestra nuestra capacidad sí. para poder integrarnos en las comunidades so, estos valores básicos pues salud y bienestar obviamente sí. eh, eh, prácticas ver las prácticas uh -huh. correctas de tu salud eh, eh, las personas que pues no tienen vivienda nosotros tratamos de ayudar ¿no? a, sí. a, a lo que son sus emergencias uh -huh. eh, tanto así necesidades de, de, de primera de primera clase, sí. su primera necesidad. Tenemos también eh, 
programas que nos encanta, nos encanta trabajar con la, la, el alfabetismo, uh -huh. tanto de los niños como de los adultos. Uh -huh. eh, nosotros tenemos una pequeña historia sobre eso. Sí. Eh, el doctor Molina, en su, en su, cuando estaba estudiando, uh -huh. él sustentó los costos de su educación para ser doctor, uh -huh. mientras él era eh, maestro de segundo grado, oh, okay. él enseñaba niños a leer. Oh, Entonces, wow. por eso uh -huh. es que hay esa afinidad con esa parte de la alfabetización oh, okay. y, y tratar de que nuestros niños pues, ten, puedan competir en, en su, a su nivel, en su grado. Sí, sí. Y estamos tratando de traer programas a la comunidad que, so, que apoyen eso. Ay, qué bueno. Y uh -huh. también los baby showers. Y también tenemos, exacto, los baby showers, donde traemos una información y talleres para instruir ¿verdad? la importancia uh -huh. de lo que es ese cuidado eh, prenatal donde, donde es importantísimo que usen su beneficio, uh -huh. sea de Molina o donde sea que, que ustedes tengan su seguro de salud, es bien importante. Sí, es sí. bien importante que, que, que se mantengan, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. eh, eh, bien informados del de proceso. Sí, sí, Cuando claro. Cuando va a tener su bebé, pues tú lo que quieres un bebé que salga completamente saludable. Así es, <risa> <risa> eso mismo. Um, sí, hay otro, if there's other companies, <risa> I was about to start talking in Spanish, sí, hay otras compañías que quieren uh, a ver quién es Molina o qué quieren hacer algo con usted, que tú puedes pues, decirle a ellos. Pues, pues, me pueden contactar a mí, yo creo que todo será que usted tiene mi celular, sí, pero sí. <risa> <risa> para aquellas personas que quieran trabajar con Molina, que tengan una iniciativa que verdaderamente uh -huh. eh, nos podamos este, explorar la idea y podamos quizás apoyarla. Eh, pueden, eh, eh, mi, se, mi email es rita punto paniagua paniagua con i de punto p a n i a g u a Ajá. arroba molina healthcare.com me pueden conseguir por ahí o sencillamente llamen a molina así es llamen a molina so rita uh, if you could tell the audience how they can get in contact with you especially you know other community agencies that would like to partner up with you So it's very easy. You just have to uh, email me or call me and we will explore ideas together. Mm -hmm. And if we can support them, we certainly will. Uh, uh, you can call Molina directly. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, you can go to uh, molinahealthcare.com. All of our contact information is there. Uh, there is, um, in that website, you can go to the Helping Hands mm -hmm. uh, a site right inside right inside the website and there is a special email there mm -hmm. that you can you can contact, contact me through there Perfect. or you can just use my, my regular email mm -hmm. rita.paniagua at molinahealthcare.com well that's wonderful so tell us one thing that you love about working at molina uh molina is your extended family yeah so when i say that it's your extended family the same at the office as with its members, right. as with when we are out there in in, in, in reaching out to the community, mm -hmm. and it's it's a very it's it, the culture of Molina. It's 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 an easy place to be at. Oh, perfect! And <laughs> I I really like it. I I come from. As you were mentioned at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, I'm at the Spanish Action League, I was there for 15 years. Right. And it's a place that I, I will always hold in my heart. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, it, there's, it's great work that comes out of that, that uh, agency. Yes. Uh, but it, when I'm in Molina, one of the things that, that I'm really in love with, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. it's that uh, I can, I'm now able to bring a resource to the community that, yes. I, that I represented and worked for. Right. So now I'm able to support it uh, through, through Molina and their medical experience right. uh, and reaching out through you know, the programs that we're trying to support. Mm -hmm. and, uh, perfect, yes. perfect. So. Well, that's wonderful. So again, you heard it from here with I Know I Can Television. And we have Rita Peniagua. I said it right this time? Yes, you Okay, did. perfect. <laughs> um, so, you know, a pleasure to have you on the show. We It's thank you so much. Yes. And you will see Malene all over the place, so just get ready. Yes. So, thank you guys and have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bueno, buenas tardes. Aquí estamos en el rinconcito de Luz Encarnación. Y hoy vamos a tener un tópico bien, bien importante que viene siendo de la NASA, de los Rockets. Y para poner un poquito de sazón en todo eso, estoy aquí con, como dicen, bling bling, con el, con el, 
un, una gorrita que le quité a alguien prestado un momentito, que <risa> tiene lo de Rocket. Y tengo un invitado muy especial que se llama... Giovanni jo Colbert. Giovanni Colbert. Y Giovanni, um, bien inter um, interesante que él viene de la NASA. So today, um, I just want to say, you know, like, I am very excited to be in a rinconcito de Luz Encarnación. And we're going to be talking today about NASA rockets, uh, a project that we're doing in the community with the Girls Inc., uh, the YWCA. And we have Giovanni Go Colbert. And um, he's our guest. Um, I hope that everybody have a good summer because it's like really, it's getting really, really hot. Oh, yeah. And I see a lot of entertainment and I'm really excited that I see a lot of parents outside with the kids. Um, I'm taking them to the pool, taking them everywhere. But the most import importantly that I always said every week is that family is important. Getting together, community together. So, um... Talking about NASA, um, Giovanni, tell me a little bit because I'm so triggered by the things that you are doing right now. And I think that, you know, like to have a rocket and, and, and I thought when we start talking about it, you know, like making, forming this, this project, I thought it was like a plastic, you know, so this right. is a real rocket. So tell me a little bit more about what is that, what is that Intel? Well, uh, as far as, as my NASA history goes, uh, I did some work for about five years with them mm -hmm. uh, for one of their programs. I work on remote sensing, which is uh, information uh, collected through satellites. And while working there, I got into model rocketry, which uh, we implemented towards STEM education and children from all the way to middle school uh, to PhD programs. And uh, with the YWCA, uh, mm -hmm. we're doing the Space Exploration Camp. And uh, we're having a lot of fun. We've already been doing it for two weeks. Yes. Uh, the girls are excited about all the missions that we've been doing. They're fantastic. Yeah. They build a kite and they're yeah, just they're... trying all these, like, trying to ask as many questions um, as possible. Yeah, we've been talking about airplanes, satellites, rockets. Uh, some of them come up with the craziest questions that even I have to go back to my books. Uh, but we're just having a lot of fun. And our end goal towards that is, is to implement model rocketry in, in, into, into that camp and get them interested in STEM education. Um, so we're going to build uh, some uh, A-class rockets, which are uh, the beginner types. Uh, these, are, these are young girls from uh, 8 years old to 12, I believe. Yes. And... Uh, So we're going to build them for about two days, and then we're going to go to the park and launch them. Uh, we got the motors already here, so that's exciting. So they'll probably be doing flights anywhere from 700 to 1,000 feet uh, of altitude. So it sounds like it's going to be fun. <laughs> I know. I'm super excited to give our city kids that opportunity. So they can. that's the closest that they probably can experience for the NASA. You know, like from like to see something flying in the sky is absolutely amazing and fantastic. And we want to thank you for participating in our in our group. So if there's other, uh, so right now you're going to be working for Le Moyne College. Um, I just moved to the area, yes, yeah. and I'm going to start as an adjunct professor there. I'm going yeah. to start doing some physics labs. So I'm yeah. excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> very exciting um, to have like um, a Latino you know like coming from the island and then representing you know like and, and going to that level is is fantastic so I think that this is a great example for all the parents and all the kids in the community that doesn't matter if you're female because we have females astronauts we have male astronauts we have professors are females and male but Just strive to do whatever you think that dreams are not just dreams. You can make them happen, you know, so that's very fantastic. So if any of these, because we are like full with non-for-profit organizations and they, we have a lot of programming that is going on in the city. So if anyone want to contact you to do a project like this, how they can contact you? Well, uh, right now, I guess it would be my email. Uh, that's, that's Giovanni. That's G-I-O-V-A-N-N-I dot colberg c-o-l-b-e-r-g at gmail.com and uh, i'll definitely keep an eye out for that uh both me and my wife we do this as a team we're bringing stem education into the area uh, not only do we rockets we also implement a little bit of robotics we're, we're all into the lego leagues uh, and the first robotics so that's also something that we've been interested in starting to 
get together to offer that for the kids as well. That's fantastic. So we have Giovanni here in town, people. Just reach out to him if you have a program. If you're a parent and you want to do a party with robotics, I think that that's a great opportunity <laughs> to involve your kids and make them, you know, like get into something like that they can build and is hands on. So I think that is like really fantastic because it stimulates the brain of the children. So we want to thank you, Giovanni, for coming yeah. in here. And um, we are looking for what day to launch the... That would be yeah. the first weekend of August, uh, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're, we're The about... last week of August, it well, will be on the 25th. 25th, correct. Yeah, we're going to be on the 25th. And um, we can, you know, like if you want more information about like coming and see, I will encourage everyone that have kids or anyone in the community. Todo el mundo que quiera venir, want to come. And, and walk with us to the park and see this amazing activity that come and join us. Um, you can reach us at uh, Luz Encarnacion, 315-447-3362, or you can email me at L Encarnacion, E-N, L-E-N-C-A-R-N-A-C-I-O-N, Y-W-C-A at C-N-Y-Mail.com. It's a long email. <laughs> <laughs> I have the long email. But you know what? I can reach out to you in a short period of time. So that's the best part Absolutely. of it. So I just want to say thank you for being in the Rincón de Luz Encarnación. Today we are going to the sky with the rockets to the NASA here in Syracuse. Mwah. <laughs> My name is Giovanni Kohlberg and uh, I'm leading the rocketry uh, workshops here. Uh, I'd like to thank Molina for this opportunity, lending us the, the tools and the tarps and everything uh, so, so we can make this happen for the kids. That's right, that's right. So Maria, as I was telling you in our, in our previous interview, this is the kind of the, the way we integrate with our community to that's bring right. uh, education programs and to and just to be around that's uh, right. our community. We got the faith base. Yes. We got community programs and everything. So yes. It's wonderful. Maria, y también queremos darle las gracias a Molina. Amén, pues habernos apreciado en esta en esta actividad tan hermosa gracias. en esta tarde. Así que muchas gracias. Yes. Hey, what's up, man? This is another edition of Talking Ish. I'm your host, Travis Blunt, and my guest this month is Michael Gault, poet, freelance writer, author, and painter. This man does a lot of things. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, let everybody know uh, where you're from and, um, uh, you know, about, about what you do. Well, when I leave uh, Syracuse area, I tell everybody I'm from Syracuse, but really I'm from Casnovia. From Casnovia. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you but, know uh, say, part of Syracuse you from? You go too far from Syracuse, you say Syracuse, they think New York City anyway, so you don't want to confuse them too much. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, I'm from, from this part of town, from uh, from Syracuse, from this part of the state, I should say, central New York. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Where'd you go to high school? I went to Casanova High School. Oh, oh yeah, 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 you went to yeah, Played football, go Lakers, you know. Go Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, been around here my whole life, with, with the exception of a stint out in Western New York. A going. stint? You made it seem like a jail set. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Western New York, I did some time. I did a stint out in Western Sometimes New York. Sometimes it does feel that yeah, way. I uh, came back to Casanova, yeah. to the farm. <laughs> yeah. so going, going to college uh, right after high school, uh, but I eventually dropped out of college. Right. And uh, they don't let you do that. At the, other, at the other place. Not in Casanova. <laughs> no. You've seen the homes in Casanova. <laughs> but, uh, but eventually I did go back uh, and, I, and I got my English degree. And, uh, That's good. I decided to put that That's to good, good use. Uh, I've always been a writer. I've always identified with poetry and with writing. And uh, so I wanted to go back and finish up when I started and get an English degree. And then I moved here back to Syracuse. Yeah, so you got your stuff together outside of Syracuse. So when you moved outside of Syracuse, where, do you, where did you go? I went to, uh, to Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah. Because you, you made it seem like you went to Miami. You <laughs> just went three hours down the road. <laughs> that's, ex that's exactly correct. I'm yeah. with you, when, when you're from Casanova, you're three hours down the road, it feels like Miami. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the unfortunate truth. But, uh, no, nah, but, you know, um, I know you as a poet. That's my first introduction to you. You sure. as a poet. You, he's, a, he's, a pretty, he's a damn good poet, too. <laughs> I don't know if you can say damn, but he's, pretty, he's a good poet. And then I found out you use a your artist, you're a painter. Sure. And um, well, that's the same story for me. I was a poet, and then I found out I was a painter. So you went from broke to being broke. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> 
I know what he's talking about. I'm a comedian. I know. I know. We're struggling artists here. Struggling artists through and through. But you uh, taught yourself to paint. Is that right? I taught myself to paint, yeah. Uh, after coming home from work at night, I was working as a public safety officer at Central mm. University. And I would come home from night, my night shift, and uh, I would need something quiet to do. So outside of writing and journaling and keeping a, a poetry book like I've done since I was young, mm -hmm. I decided to pick up a paintbrush and try my hand at that as well. Oh, wow. So uh, it's coming home. And, and this is some of your artwork here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, this one right here. This is bring to the big one. The flanked around me here, my man Marley. Marley, uh, is that who it is? It looked like somebody taking a uh, <laughs> going to the bathroom after <laughs> holding it for an hour. He just, He's taking a oh, Marley. <laughs> bum the clutch. Yeah. Bum the clutch. <laughs> no, nah, but that's that's good. Uh, you know, you, you're a Marley fan. I sure am. Yeah, went to Jamaica when I was 19, and uh, did you ride the dolphins? <laughs> I didn't ride the dolphins. No. Because my uh, girlfriend went to Jamaica, yeah. and she, she grew up. I know. I've always, I've always, I've always been a little regretful that I didn't ride the you dolphins. Ride I missed dolphins. out. You know, well, it's probably a good thing because dolphins rape people. <laughs> well, it's never, documented. I've never heard that. There's so. a Facebook help group. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad yeah, I, there is. I dodged a bullet there, though. <laughs> you dodged, <laughs> so, you dodged a literal bullet. <laughs> <laughs> And um, this is a nice one here. Uh, what inspired you to do that one right there? Well, I'd say this kind of is representative of my country upbringing a little bit. Specifically, this was actually a uh, custom piece made for somebody uh, that, that just... Did they live in Fulton? <laughs> no, they, <I'm> <laughs> no, but uh, growing, up, growing up in the country, you know, red barn paint, you see that everywhere. Uh, everywhere. I just like the colors of it. Uh, I didn't necessarily grow up in a barn myself, but I, I did grow up around a lot of cornfields. You grew up in a barnish neighborhood. Barnish environment. Barnish, barnish environment. So, uh, so I would say... No, yeah, that's nice. It's a nice painting. You have some, some others conscious. down here. That, yeah, that's part of the... Something that I would say is from my childhood also. I don't play nearly as much chess as I would like to, but I was... I was ranked in the U.S. Chess Federation what? when I was a kid. I was pretty nice with it. Searching for Bobby Fischer. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was searching for Bobby Fischer. They, what was you ranked? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a... You know, it's just like a it's not like... I wasn't like with you. It wasn't like I'm like the 65th best. Here. It was like they give you a number that's like you're like... A three hundred and sixty nine point seventy rating or something. You, you might know? be, but in Syracuse you might have been number one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, it was, I can still remember the kids that beat me every year. They're oh yeah, <laughs> I was like number four. No, number four. That, that's pretty good. But it, but it was a big part of my life, and it shows up in a lot of my artwork. The the, the influence of chess. Now, um, you, is there a place that you uh you display these? Um. Yeah, yeah, I, I display them at my studio and uh, in Lincourt part of Syracuse. Okay. Uh, it's. Uh, the Painting Poet Art and Activity Center. Uh, we have classes there. This, this barn that you, you're seeing mm -hmm. right here. Uh, I, I, it's a small gallery. And we also have open mics for poets there. That's where you get the Painting Poet part. What are the open mics? Open mic is every uh, third Thursday. We actually call it Open House Poetry. The building looks like a small house right on the edge of the neighborhood in Lincourt. So we call it Open House Poetry, and we open our doors, and everybody comes in and shares their story, whether it be musical with a guitar, mm -hmm. whether it be strictly poetry. Uh, but we have a lot of people come in, comedians, right. poets, musicians, all sorts of storytellers. Make sure y'all go to Mike's page, uh, Mike, Mike, Michael, go, go to his Facebook page. What's your ID? Well, the, the Painting Poet Facebook page Facebook. is the best place right now because we're getting geared up to have a grand opening of a big website. And But until we will announce that on the Painting Poet Facebook page. So make sure y'all check out the Painting Poet uh, Facebook page and, and follow Michael go on uh, Facebook as well, man. Uh, always updating. Um, by the time this airs, in uh, August, uh, you know, um, another open mic should be. Yeah, the third up. Thursday, I believe that's August seventeenth. August seven, August seventeenth. Yeah. So um, make sure y'all go out and support this man. Uh, you know, his uh, open mic, his uh, paintings, his poetry, and everything. And um, you, you, you're an author too. Yep, I am. I just published my first book of poetry, and I'm uh, submitting the second one right now to hopefully win a, a chat book contest, where it's mm -hmm. actually a. a collection of my poetry and my art, and it's a press in Buffalo that's holding a contest to uh, publish the, the, the winning work. So I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, they'll, they'll take a good look at, at my work. And uh, But yeah, I'm also helping local authors put together uh, work of their own, whether it be a book of essays, uh, a children's book. Uh, I'm working on a children's book of my own, oh, wow, so okay. I'm trying to put that English degree to good use. Right. And, uh, 
Uh, a lot of people have material that they want to get out there, whether it be photographs, whether it be artwork, whether it be poetry, and they don't necessarily know how to compile it in a manuscript form to get it into publishing format. And that's what I'm helping people do as well. That's good. So, yeah, again, man, make sure go to his page, uh, Painting Poet Syracuse, uh, the Facebook page, Painting Poet Syracuse. The, the, the Painting Poet. The Painting, Painting Poet Art and Activity Center, but on Facebook, it's just The Painting Poet. Go to that page, like it, follow it, and also go to his personal page, Michael Gaw, and he'll update you. He's constantly updating people on uh, what's going on at his art gallery, his, his open mics, and what he's doing in his personal life. Yeah. Also, and that's the book right there. That's so the book. That's, it's the first book. It's Why called, in the wind? Why in the wind? Because it's not stationary. <laughs> that's where we all go. <laughs> so it doesn't stay in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why in the wind? That's the best answer I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> why in the wind? Because you can't nobody tell where it came from. That's why. That's why we do it in the wind. But yeah, <laughs> this is his book, man. Make you can get sure that you... on Amazon. If you go on Amazon, type in Why in the Wind, you'll find that book. All right, yeah, make sure y'all go to Amazon, get Why in the Wind, M.A. Galt, M Michael Galt, man, and, uh, you know, keep supporting his brother. And before we get out of here, uh, you know, just random questions, just random question segment, I want to ask you, what's your last show you watched and why? Oh, my God, last television show? Last, last TV show. <laughs> I, I, I haven't watched TV in God knows how long, but I'll tell you, uh, a movie. Well, you're too busy painting and well, poetry and writing books. Yeah, you know, uh, What about the movie? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to tell you the movie only because I just, this movie just popped in my head. Yeah. I just watched it. It's called No Escape. No Escape? It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. It's, it's a, it's I've a, seen it on Netflix. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I've seen it. Is it a good movie? That's, yeah, this is what you said TV. I'm like, I'll, I'll see the show. It's a, it's, it's a good movie. I mean, there's a scene where parents are trying to save their kids from an attack, and they throw so them it's, off the roof. I, I think I know the movie you're talking about. It's uh, uh, <laughs> um, the white family. Yeah, and they're yeah. In, a, in a foreign country. Yeah, that's Owen, why it was Owen scary. Wilson. That's Owen why it was scary, right? You're yeah. like, I'm a, I'm a white person. I can put myself in this white family's place. Yeah. I got a bunch of these foreigners chasing me. I got that. Yeah, no, I'm just messing with you. But it does yeah. seem like a good movie. What made you pick that movie? I, 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 I definitely like the psychological thrillers. Psychological. The, the ones that... Uh, uh, Get into your head and make you think. What if? What would I do if I was into that situation? Exactly. Could would I have the the courage mm -hmm. to, you know, go for the lesser of two evils? Throw my kid o over a gap in a roof to try to save them from some deeper horror. Depends, so depends. <laughs> depends how the kid made you feel that day. Yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, it depends on your, your relationship with, with the kid. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was great talking to you. Mike. Likewise, man. likewise. Yes. Again, go to Poets. Uh, the Painting Poets. The Painting Poets, yeah. yeah. The Painting Poets, go to the Facebook page, and also follow him on Facebook, Michael Gall. And um, he'll always, always update and let you know when the open mic is, his gallery and all that. And uh, support the brother. Go to the Amazon and get the book, uh, Why in the Wind, and, you know, do all that, man. This is Travis Blunt, another edition of Talking Ish. Peace out. Hello everybody, this is your girl Marie Technique. Welcome back to Creative Techniques. I have a special guest for us today, for all of us. I'm going to get something out of this. you going to get something out of this. My big brother, everybody's big brother, Marquise New York. How you doing? Good. How's everything going? Great. Uh, a lot of things are happening in my life right now. It's yes. exciting. It's scary. It's new. So mm -hmm. a lot going on. So he's a recording artist, rapper, singer, poet, songwriter, producer, um, and he does it all for Christ. So can you tell us about your new, what you got going on that's new right now? Uh, what's new? Um, I just released my first single mm -hmm. um, underneath Nice Management. Um, I'm being managed by, um, it's entitled uh, Midnight Run, and it's basically like my introduction to the town. To let everybody know who I am, what I'm about, and uh, you know my message and what I stand for. And who are you? Like, where did you? Are you from Syracuse? Where are you from? Yeah, originally born and raised in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. um, stayed here the first 18 years of my life before I went away to college in Maryland. A um, few years later, came back, went to OCC, and then joined the Navy mm -hmm. for six years and came back. So yeah, God is good, and I'm happy that you're back and doing your calling and. And last time that we were on air, um, we spoke about journaling and journaling your gifts and, you know, what is it that's driving you? So I hope you guys still have your journals out because I told you every time you tune in, have those journals. 
Um, so he's going to talk a little bit about what's inspiring him because he's always had this gift of writing. So what's inspiring you to go for it now? Like, what is it that's like, okay, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to do it. Um, I just feel like, like I'm, I'm bursting at the seam with, uh, with content yes. and, um, the fact that, um, you know, taking a look at the way music is headed, um, you know, with new artists, you know, right. getting on the scene, um, both, you know, uh, Christian and secular. Right. Um, and I just feel like um, I have something that I need to share with the world, right. you know, and my hope is to, you know, save one person, you know, one youth, one child, um, one young adult, and, you know, get them to rekindle their relationship with Christ. Amen. So. Amen. Now, do you think you said something about the, you know, the me the music nowadays and, you know, what music is geared towards now. What do you think that your message is going to do to separate you from what other people are doing right now? Um, as far as if we're talking locally, um, I really haven't heard of anybody, mm -hmm. any Christian, quote unquote, right. um, rappers mm -hmm. in the Syracuse area. So, you know, to step out and, and be one of the first, I think, is, is a blessing mm -hmm. and it's a curse at the same time because it's so new. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I have the fear that people won't accept it. But if I, you know, act on that fear and I don't put out my music, then, you know, I'm only hurting myself. And, you know, um, so I think that, um, you know, uh, we just have to put a different spin on right. Christian music and Christian right. hip-hop um, and, and let people know that, you know, it's a genre as well it and, and it's positive and, you know, I'd rather have, you know, the youth or, or someone's kids listening to some positive, positive music right. than some of the stuff that's being put out, um, you know, now. Not that I'm bashing anybody. Right. And, no. You know, I listen to it's my hip-hop, my R&B. Um, but just to give a, another outlet for, right. for people to, you know, to have something positive to listen to and rock with. Right, right. Now, you mentioned something about fear. And do you think that, like, if something like with fear, like, is that something that you actually feel or is it something that drives you right now? Like, are you driven because of, you know, the purpose that God has placed in you? Or is it because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to operate in fear? Like, what is it? I think it's it's probably 50-50. Okay. Um, you know, I, I never want to operate in fear. Right. You know, God tells us not to, you know, not to have the spirit of fear. Right. Um, we weren't made with it. Exactly. Right. You know, and but it's also, you know, the fact that um, I think we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the world is beckoning for, you know, a, 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 a massive rekindling yes. with Christ. And I think that, you know, music is um, an avenue that's loved by everybody. Right. You know, everybody has that favorite song or that favorite moment they remember right. when a song comes on. They could just hear the first second of a song. Right. And it could take them back, you know, and to, to a time and place and they'll, you know, have that memory. So, I, you know, I think that music is powerful. Mm -hmm. And if used, you know, the correct way and the right way, you know, it, it could break barriers right. and, you know, bring people together and unify them. I get that from your music. I get that timeless feel from your music when I, you know, we've known each other. Definitely. <laughs> so Midnight Run is in our first run. Like, <laughs> I've known you. So when I heard Midnight Run, I'm like, yes, this is it. Like, this is him. Like, and it's not corny. Like, you know how you listen to something and you're like, that's my boy. I don't really want to, you know, but it's not corny. It's dope. And the lyricism and the production, you produced it, yes. produced it. Okay. Wrote it. So you, you're producing production, rhyming and singing. Like you triple, like, come on now. Like you really came hard with this one. And I'm so proud of you because it's just like, you took everything that you've been working so hard for. You've been working. Definitely. I know you've been working. And just to see that in you and to actually hear that come out and to hear like, I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> and to hear like, you know, just what God has really been working on in you and been brewing in you and time and time and time. And you're like, I got to go. Mm -hmm. No shoot. I'm out here. Definitely. You know? Yeah. So... 
it's exciting. So what's your favorite verse off of Midnight Run? Uh it's it's probably the first verse, you know. That's mine too. When I when I wrote <laughs> it, it's basically like I said, an in introduction of myself, mm -hmm. you know, into this massive, you know, populated world of music. Right. Um and and there are many, you know, Christian hip hop artists out there. Uh, you know, who was established, your Lecrae's, your Andy mm -hmm. Minios, mm -hmm. your Cannons, you know. Um, and, and I aspire to to be like them right. in a sense. Right. Um, but, you know, I have to be myself and, you know, be creative and, and bring what I have to offer to the table. So. Yeah, I didn't hear any of them in you. You know, I heard you. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, like, this world needs. They need to hear you. And that's why God gives us the gift and that he gives us. So that he can hear, people can hear and experience him through us. Definitely. So, if you don't mind, I want you to spit that verse. Can we get you to spit that verse? Because I know Creative Techniques want to hear you spit that verse. They got they they got their notebooks out. <laughs> they journaling. They, they about to be inspired. <laughs> so, can you can you just give us a little bit of that verse? Yeah, sure. Um, so, start out. Uh, it's a long way down without a shoot, ain't it? But I ain't leaving anytime soon, baby. So tell the media, press, and paparazzi. Got something on my chest, I can't even get up off it. Yeah, because it's easy to lose your mind when you're not going the same place as all these other rhymes. Mm. And all these other rappers who are starting to despise excuses they keep on throwing at you, knowing that they lies. What? Shaking hands won't look you in the eyes, because you be repping Jesus and your lines are filled with God. <laughs> my lines are filled with God. Yes. So try to put an end to my career and really turn to be a blessing in disguise. Mm. For God so loved the world, he gave us Jesus, yeah. comma. So how can people say he is the man? Kinda. Too often we forget his blood covered us all, so I thank him and praise him because he truly is my all. Yes. Where do I go? Where do I stand? <laughs> That's my song. <laughs> and you see how like lyrical it is? It's not like A, B, C, B, you know. It's, it's really lyrical and he's dope with it. And I feel the spirit of God in your music. And I think that nations and people are going to be changed through what God has already given you. So I inspire you to take that gift, whatever it is that, that's ruining you, whatever it is you've been sitting on, whatever it is you've been waiting for, and allow God to truly use you. Open it up. Open up that notebook. Just write it down and get going, whether it's poetry, whether it's cooking, whether it's com comedy or whatever. Just go for it and watch him use you because it's in you. But thank you for watching Creative Techniques with your girl Techniques and Big Brother, yeah. my big brother. Well, he really my little brother, but, <laughs> you know, everybody big brother. I'm proud of you. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming.